and as Americans, just as the heroes of 1821 were inspired by those heroes of 1776. May God bless you, Mr. President, together with the First Lady, together with your family, and with our nation's armed forces. Bless you with health, long life, bless you with his grace and his strength. Long live America, long live the Greek people. Zito y Elada, Zito y America. Archbishop, thank you very much for those kind words, and I should begin by explaining why uh, this may be the first Greek-American event that my wife Jill's not been with me, but she is uh, down in Tennessee uh, with the families of, uh, of those who were killed in that god-awful attack, uh, and uh, she apologized for not being able to be with you. But uh, let me just say that um, my sister Val is with, is with me, so I have the, the better part of the family. I used to be three years older than Val, now I'm 20 years older than Val. <laughs> we went to the same university together. I graduated, she graduated with honors, that's not a joke. <laughs> she managed every one of my campaigns since I was in high school, and, uh, but uh, so anyway, I want to acknowledge my sister, who's the best part of the family. And I want to... And, uh, Archbishop, uh, I want to say that uh, I've... Uh, I found that uh, the two most uh, Christ-like figures I've ever met were His All Holiness and the Pope. And they're friends. They've talked... To, he's, the Pope has talked to me about the friendship. And uh, the Pope is ill now, so say an extra prayer for him. But he still wonders why, as a Roman Catholic, I bless myself this way. <laughs> and I've been, I've been hanging around. It's all your fault. I, uh, <laughs> you all think I'm kidding. Not, not really. It was, uh, where's John Sarbanes? Is he here? Oh, he went to vote? Well, John Sarbanes' dad, Paul, was uh, it's hard to believe, but junior to me in seniority, but my educator. Paul was a brilliant guy, and uh, I owe Paul uh, all that I know about Greece and the involvement for deep involvement for so many years. And uh, but I wanted to say hello to John. Look, uh, it's wonderful to welcome all of you to the White House to celebrate 202 years of Greek independence and all the great contributions Greek and Greek Americans have made to our country. The world owes a great deal of debt to Greece, including the revolutionary idea of democracy, and it was revolutionary at the time, which continues to deliver for the people to this day. In fact, earlier today, I was co-hosting the second International Summit of Democ for Democracy, and uh, democracies and nations around the world came together to commit ourselves to defending democracy. And that was done earlier today. So it's great to have all of you here in this special day. Your Eminence, is a, it's an honor to see you and so many representatives of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America again. I also want to welcome the ambassador of Greece and Cyprus and our own ambassador to Greece, George Sunis. George, where are you? There he is. And by the way, there's a very important Republican in former administrations in the days when we used to really like each other. I still do. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you, Tom. Tom Carlogas. Tom and I spent a whole heck of a lot of hours arguing and then shaking hands, right, Paul? Tom, I, good to see you, pal. It's great to see you. And uh, if you'll excuse the point of personal privilege, as we used to say in the Senate, it's great to be here with uh, friends like Father Alex. Father, I'm going to ruin your reputation by talking. And the only reason I ran for president and got elected was so I could award him the Presidential Medal of Freedom last year. 
Thank you, Father. As a matter of fact, Father, I still haven't figured out, are you the reason I've been made an archon? Is that what happened? I don't, I, I don't know, but, but you've been a great friend for a long time, and your family as well have been great friends of ours. And uh, I'm here uh, with uh, my president of the Biden Institute, uh, a guy named Dennis Asanas, who was the president of the University of Delaware, but the real power is his wife. And uh, both of you stand up. I want everybody to see you guys. These are from Delaware. And great friends like Andy and Mike Manitos, and they're a big part of the reason my Greek-American constituents in Delaware uh, sometimes refer to me as, as the man sitting behind you, Father, who helped me my very first campaign directly behind you, was I, the nickname I got early on when I won by 3,200 votes in the, for the Senate seat when I was 29 years old. Is because I started calling me Joe Bidenopolis because, oh, you think I'm kidding. I'm not, I'm not joking, am I? I'm not joking because of the overwhelming support from the Greek American community. And, uh, and I'm a little worried. My sister's sitting next to Tom Hanks. Uh, but uh, Tom, welcome, pal. Welcome. I want to begin today by acknowledging all the families across Greek, Greece who are grieving loved ones lost during the train accident in Tempe. It was a tragic, tragic accident, and they're in our prayers. And Jill and I and the American people were deeply saddened by this tragedy. And our prayers continue to be with the Greek people, including all of those lost loved ones and those who are recovering from those injuries. And uh, this afternoon, we honor the deep history of the United Our Nations, and, we are, and honor the lives that were cut short last month as well. Thousands of years ago, uh, Ancient Greek philosopher Socrates said, and he's said to discuss the simple yet profound wisdom. He said, know thyself, know thyself. Well, to truly know America, we have to know the history and our hopes. You have to know a little about Greece to really understand it. Greece is woven in the very foundations of our democracy, of our nation. We see it across this, this city from the columns of the capital to the to the figures that flanked the Supreme Court, inspired by Timus and uh, the Greek goddess of law of justice, of law and justice. And more than that, we feel it in our nation's soul because we are governed as we, the people. The United States is the only nation in the world built on an idea, an idea. Every other nation of the world is based on geography, ethnicity, or religion. But we're based on an idea, and it's not hyperbole to suggest that. The idea that we're all created equal. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men and women are created equal, endowed by our Creator with certain inalienable rights, life, liberty. No other nation is based on an idea. And it was essentially a Greek idea early on. I really mean it. It was Greek in all those years ago that inspired the framers to believe in this radical idea and to build, to build a nation around it. Years after American independence, this is the same idea the brave Greek patriots to fight their own freedom, for their own freedom as well, laying the groundwork for a future that would make both our nations proud. So today and every day, Greek independence is a celebration for Americans and Greeks alike. It gives us a chance to honor this history and binds us to the values that unite us. Liberty, equality, dignity, and democracy, and democracy. Throughout our shared history, every generation has to step up and protect those values against democracy's moral, mortal foes. You know, I learned in graduate school and undergraduate school about I was a political science and history major that democracy had to be protected by every generation. And I used to think it was more hyperbole than anything else. But it need be, every generation. There's nothing automatic about democracy. Nothing automatic about it. And we saw this during World War II when Greece and the United, Greek and the United States both fought the, the forces of fascism. We saw it in the Cold War when our people stood as one to prevail against communism. And we see it today as our nation stands together to support the brave people of Ukraine as they fight for the same values Greeks and American patriots did all those years ago. Liberty, dignity, 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 not just liberty, dignity, and democracy. Simply put, as allies and partners and friends, we've proven time and again 
that we aren't just inheritors of democracy, we're its champions. We're its champions. And that's thanks to the large part of the courage and character of the Greek American community. You know, throughout my career, I've been lucky to see this courage and character up close. I see it in the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America, which has always stood up for social justice and civil rights. I've seen in the leaders across the Greek American community have always led with heart and with hope. None more consequential in my view, none more consequential than Paul Sarbanes, as I said earlier. He was the guy who, uh, who educated me. Most of all, I've seen in the character and courage of millions of Greek immigrants who've always enriched what it means to be American. As I said earlier, our country owes debt of, to the founders of a Greek democracy and the first who taught us, we the people, to hold power, to shape our destiny. But you know, we all owe a great deal to Greek families like so many of yours who left everything behind to push that destiny ever forward, who generation after generation have strived to make our nation more free and more fair, and across our country have framed the flame of liberty and fanned it and started to flicker in Athens a thousand years ago and now it burns brightly here. Today, let's recommit to our work. And by the way, we have the head of a, a, a committee I once chaired, the Foreign Relations Committee. We got a guy sitting over there, I think he's Greek, who is, uh, who is mildly stand up. And there's two things you got to know about him. One, he's smarter than you, and two, he's tough. Good to see you, man. Thanks for being here. And folks, look, at this moment where our world is, in, is in, many of you heard me say this before, Madam Ambassador, but uh, we're, the world's at an inflection point. You're going to see things that are going to, the next three to five years, and the last three or four or five years, is going to determine what the next four or five decades are going to look like. We go through this period every five or six generations, and we're at that point now. The world is changing. It's changing significantly. We have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to continue to be the keepers of the flame if we do it well. So let's work together to show that knowing America, knowing ourselves, means working for the future for great, with greater hope, equality, and the possibility for people around the world. I, I absolutely know we can do it, and the chairman's heard me say this many times. I've never been more optimistic about our future than I am today. I really mean it. We have such an enormous opportunity, not just for the United States, but to change the nature of how we deal in this hemisphere and around the world. Because we're the United States of America. We've got to remember that. We're the United States of America. There is nothing, nothing beyond our capacity, nothing if we set our mind to it. I really mean it. Not a single thing. As long as we do it together. And I can think of no greater group of people to do it with than the Greek American community. So happy Independence Day to you and your friends. God bless you all. And before the reception begins, we have a performance for you. And I'm not even going to tell you who it is. I'm going to say, but thank you, thank you, thank you all. Let's bring, let's bring out somebody who Tom knows well. Thank you. <laughs> Distinguished guests.